I'm so happy to have everybody here. I'm Sandy Sokot from the World of the program. And I'd like to begin by inviting uh, Kevin Kumashira, the Dean of the School of Education, to come up and welcome everybody. And then I'll give you a little background on what, we're, what you'll get to see very shortly. Everybody here OK? Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. And thanks also to all of our participants, the organizer, Sandy Sokot, and everyone who's helped to pull this event together. Um, I've been the Dean of the School of Education here for a year. I just passed my one year anniversary, actually, a little while ago. I know, isn't that amazing? And I'm still standing. Um, but one thing that I, I mentioned that because one of the very first things I did when I became Dean was um, uh, was host this event That's right. and yeah. it's been such an amazing way to mark uh, my time here um, so there's really three things that I wanted to say just in my very short welcome and one is that um, the School of Education has this uh, University of San Francisco right um, this amazing history and tradition of demonstrating its commitment to its Jesuit values and its commitments to social justice by really doing work that is about addressing controversial issues, addressing difficult issues around diversity and inequities in society, and really trying to walk the talk in all sorts of ways. And the School of Education in particular, one of the reasons that I really wanted to come here and join the faculty, staff, and students and communities is because in, it, in our 40 year history, we have really developed an amazing record of partnerships with organizations and initiatives that are doing just incredibly groundbreaking work around different, um, around a range of issues regarding education, children, families, and issues of equity and diversity. And the amazing The World as It Could Be Institute is really one of those amazing examples that, that, we're, that we're trying to build on. So I, guess, so I guess my first point is really to congratulate all the work that you're doing and to express my um, really profound um, desire to continue these kinds of partnerships and to see it expand and to grow because we are not simply a host and we're not simply a participant, we're also a learner and we're benefiting from the great work that you're doing. Um, second thing I wanted to say is I got uh, a message yesterday from my fantastic colleague Rick Ayers who's sitting right there about the passing of one of our dear colleagues, um, Bill Watkins really a, a giant in the field of um, education and multicultural education. Um, the uh, author of this incredible book called White Architects of Black Education. Um, an incredible sociologist and historian and a champion of a lot of civil rights issues in education. Earlier this year, I was talking to another colleague from Chicago. He's from Chicago and another colleague was telling me this is an, ab an amazing year and it's a year that we, we that reminds us of about, you know, a little over a decade ago, when within a short period of time, within a few months, a whole long list of giants from the civil rights era passed away. Mm -hmm. And that has happened this year as well, right? 2014 is a strange year as we think about the, the passing of so many giants. Mm -hmm. And so I bring that up as my second point, as really to kind of mark the moment that we're in, that we, that these moments of loss are also a moment for us to pause and to ask, well, what is significant about this time? And how, how might we kind of learn from and grow from this time, not merely as a time of loss, but as a time of kind of renewal? And one thing that I think is really important for us to think about is that, you know, we often talk about civil rights, but there's some great historical research, and this is why I think about people like Bill Watkins, who reminds us that actually the earliest parts of the civil rights movement, we can see a different language being used and different goals and a different discourse, right? A lot of the leaders of the civil rights movement back in the 1940s and 50s were actually not pushing for civil rights. Their goal was actually a much broader agenda of human rights. And a lot of historians remind us that we made some compromises to focus on civil rights because we thought it was more doable, and in fact it was. But we never really came back to that larger goal. And what I find 
to be some of the most powerful movements in this country and around the world around education issues today are those who are pushing for us to see education as a human right, mm -hmm. as something that is much broader. And again, that goes to the value of the work that this organization and our participants are doing. And then third, my final point that I wanted to say, um, I, well, this will sound like I'm just promoting myself, but in about a month, I'll actually be giving a lecture um, that is about arts, education, and social justice. And part of what I want to argue is that all these reforms happening right now in the United States and abroad that claim to be about improving education, we see that a lot of these reforms are actually making things much worse. And one of the central ways they do that is they make high stakes attached to certain kinds of tests and certain kinds of curriculum that compel us to narrow and narrow and get away from the education that we know does the most benefit to the students who struggle the most. And one of the things that does the most benefit is not only a rich curriculum, but a rich curriculum that is centered on the arts, right? The arts has so much power in terms of getting us to think outside the box, in terms of being generative and being creative. And the arts also, particularly the performing arts, has this amazing ability to help us to embody our learning and to experience learning in a whole different way than how we typically teach and learn. And that's why I'm also so excited about programs like this. Um, I unfortunately have to run out to my next event, but I am so glad that I'm so glad that all of the performers are here and you can't see me, but I'm looking at you because of you. <laughs> and I'm also so glad that all of you are here as well. Um, I hope that the time here has been incredibly valuable. And more importantly, I look forward to seeing the changes that we can all do together as we build from this important event. So once again, welcome and thank you very much.
today. We are continuing our readings of our acrostic poems. Can anyone tell me what an acrostic poem is? Browning, thank you. An acrostic poem is where you take a meaningful word and you write it vertically on the paper and then every letter of the word is uh, you make a phrase or a sentence with that letter, starting with that letter. That's great that you remembered what it is. Would you care <coughs> to read your poem to us today? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. It's called Indian. <laughs> <laughs> I am a proud native of the citizen what is this stuff? Potawatomi Nation. Oh. Can you kick me out of this class? I am a proud. Great Cup Casino, bro. The citizen Potawatomi Nation. Somebody's son died today. Somebody's daughter died today. This young man is gone. His human rights ultimately snuffed out because he was killed. And all too often, in any barrio, hood, ghetto, suburb, rural area, all over this world, somebody's son or daughter is dying today. How could they speak out for themselves and their own human rights, their own personal being, when they're gone? What if they had another chance? What if they had another chance? What, what if, if they had another chance? What if they had another chance? They had another chance. They had another chance. What if they had? What if they had another chance? What if they had another chance? What if he had another chance?
Good morning, class. Good morning, everyone. Good How's morning. everybody today? Good, good. good. Thanks. Good, good. We're continuing the reading of our acrostic poems. Can anyone tell me what an acrostic poem is? Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Brownie? <laughs> an acrostic poem is where you choose a meaningful word and you write the word vertically on the page, and every letter of the word becomes the beginning of that line of the poem. That's so wonderful that you remembered that. Would you read your poem to us, please? <laughs> My poem is titled Indian. I am a proud native of the citizen Potawatomi nation. Don't ask me if I'm a full blood or a real Indian, and then steal my spirit. I am a proud American. Never question my identity, as I don't question yours. Never, Never question, question my identity, identity as, as I don't question, question yours. yours. Never, Never question, question my identity, identity as, as I don't question, question yours. yours. the truth of love playing out, calling forth the wounds of oppression to consciously be embraced, cultivating actions of peace coming forth in the time and way best for all. This confirms that love always prevails, not dependent upon time. If you get down and you quarrel every day, we'll sing psalms of praise to judge up for you each day. That's the way Rasta helps each another on the way to make it easier, a whole lot breezier. Right. At the heels of the Vietnam War came the killing fields of Cambodia. My family came here as refugees. The sounds of the killing fields still echo on Oakland streets. My brother, like so many of the 1.5 generation, got caught up, then locked up. He, a refugee of a country that was supposed to be neutral during the war, but was secretly bombed, my brother is now deportable. He cannot leave the country. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, decides if he can stay. If deported, he can never come back to a country that had been home since he was five. Everyone has the right to live, live to be, be free, free, and to, to feel, feel safe. She was the counselor of an elementary school. When she walked down the halls, students came up and hugged her. She talked endlessly about her love for the children there. My kids, she called them. But when a six-year-old girl told her teacher that her cousin, a boy at the school, three years older, had been touching her, the counselor told us, this little girl is often telling stories. I know that boy, she said. He's such a teddy bear. And this little girl is, well, she's always with her hand and her hip and flitting her hair. I try to interject to say the truth of her story is not as important as its obvious request for support and, and help. She tells me she will look into it. And I'm overcome by the feeling of what it, we adults do for the children we say we love. Everyone has the right to live, to, live. to, be, to be free, free and, and to, to feel, feel safe. safe.
an eight-year-old girl who's trapped in the special ed, yet she had no disability. An eight-year-old girl who was denied membership in the campfires and Girl Scouts, yet was given no reason. An eight-year-old girl who grew up and then realized that there was nothing wrong with her, but rather something wrong with member acceptance and those in charge of it. People say, forget about it. It's no big deal. Well, it is a big deal if children have and continue to be treated in the same way just because of their clothes, their accent, the color of their skin, or culture. That eight-year-old girl is now 34 and still remembers and recognizes how that treatment has shaped her life. I'm not that girl. I'm her brother, yet it affects me too. Everyone has the right to live, live. to be free, to feel safe. Everyone, Everyone has, has the right, the right to, to live, live, to be, be free, and, and, and to, to feel, feel safe. safe. Brother, teacher, sister, family of community. We have to be late to class. I, can't, I, I told that lady home. McDonald's to hurry up. I know. It takes so long. We were hungry. We're gonna, we're, we gonna be, we're gonna be late to class. Man, I, I, can't, I can't believe. I Why'd you pull me over? I didn't, you, didn't, you don't need to ask me any questions. Where are you going? She has to tell me why she pulled me. Uh, I think you have to tell me first why you pulled me over. I don't have to tell you anything. Get out of the car. What is happening with this? Why are they putting him in handcuffs? Why are you pulling me over? Just be quiet, you're just a kid. Got anything in the car? You can't be searching my car. You don't have permission. Hey, don't worry. Don't worry. Guess what? We are going to college for free because I'm going to sue OPD <laughs> today. You know what? I'm taking street law and you're searching my car illegally. Get her badge number. Get the badge number. We suing them today. Don't cover up your name. Don't cover your name. Oh, see, now they want to cover their name. Now they want to be all walking away. Get back in the car. Come on. We're going to, we're going to go. We're going to tell them. What's going on with them? I don't know. Did you get the badge number? No, I didn't get What's it. What's the problem? I told you to get the badge I number. Couldn't I can't it. talk in do it at the same time. <laughs> she was treated with cruelty. made to feel less than human. I offered her support. Guess what? You got the best shoes in this class. 
If I could fit them, I'll wear them myself. Don't worry about them. He helped her feel human again. Wahakin fruit brought to us again and again. Traveler stomachs, some vegetarians. But, but what about fruit, fruit for, for everyone? everyone? Local teachers with localized diets. Don't their stomachs too deserve papaya? That spoon dipped him into a bowl of pink yum. Yeah, I wanted some. But, but what, what about, about fruit, fruit for everyone? everyone? I left my home to understand and learned a lesson quite unplanned. Didn't want to pack my privilege, but I felt it with the fruit she bought just us from the fridge. Why not fruit for everyone? Changes the equation. Whatever power I thought I had got sucked down into its barrel. And its poisonous bullets attack my spine every time I come home after dark. Those 30 seconds replay each time I walk alone past sundown. It could have been worse, I remind myself. <clears throat> there was no blood, no broken bones, just a closing. A everyone, 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 everyone is born free and equal. right to have their basic needs met and to live with dignity. Food, water, water shelter, shelter, dignity. We all have the right to shelter. because of my race. I have never been discriminated against because of my gender. I have never been persecuted for being Catholic. 
I have never had to worry about having a roof over my head or food on the table. I've never had to worry about my education or the education of my children. I've never had to worry about freedom of speech. I have never been attacked because of my sexuality. My marriage is recognized by law. Free freedom to think. Freedom to share histories, hopes, fears, struggles. Freedom to learn and have a vibrant community of scholar activists. Freedom to become serious, playful, brilliant, curious, humble, strong. Freedom to build alliances across differences, again and again and again. Freedom for each difference to shine. Freedom to enter uncomfortable realms of inherited separation in ways that nurture and heal. Freedom for the world to become smaller because we have formed global relationships committed to continual learning and connected to the interdependence of our lives. Freedom for the world to become larger because our horizons have expanded beyond the borders of self, family, community, nation. Freedom to hope because the source of our hope is our relationships, our capacity to be with and let be. Last night I dreamed that I was a child Out where the pines grow wild and tall I was trying to make it home through the forest before the dark trees and there in the light my father's house stood shining hard and bright the branches and brambles tore my clothes and scratched my arms but I ran till was a painter. If I were a painter, I would paint a new world. Not a world without conflict, 
but a world without ignorance. Not a world without anger, but a world without apathy. Each brushstroke, carefully creating communities and countries. Imagination, innovation, inspiration, intertwined with the breeze. If I was a painter, I would recreate our cultural regression and relaunch a revolution. But this world is no blank canvas. We can't paint over history, but we can learn from it. We can expect more from ourselves and each other. We can emerge from seclusion, pop the bubbles that keep us apart. We can reinvigorate our nation. We can be the change we want to see. Together, we can paint the world with our words. <laughs>